So, you know, we in a new year, new me season. Yes. But a lot of us still have some of the same goals from 2023. And a lot of y'all, and I know for sure because y'all came up to me and asked. You did. A lot of y'all wanted to start a podcast. Yes. I got good news for you, player. Spotify for podcasts is here for every need you have. We've been using Spotify for podcasters since we started our podcast. It's so easy. You literally record, edit, and upload all from your phone, your computer. So no matter what your setup looks like, you can start now. Yes, get your conversations, your opinion, your views out to the world. People need to hear you. You can distribute your podcast to Spotify and anywhere else that podcasts are heard. With Spotify for podcasters, you can earn money in a multitude of ways. Ads or podcast subscriptions. I mean, it's an easy way to get your visions out to the world and earn some extra pocket change. Yeah, my favorite thing about all of this is free 99. Yes. <laughs> you know, they don't charge you a dime. So you really got nothing holding you back. Today, today, not tomorrow, today, let's be heard. Spotify for podcasters. Let's be seen. Welcome, welcome back to another episode of the For the Healthy Health podcast. Where we talk about conscious living, self-awareness, and everything in between. I'm your host, Ree. Sunset Tim. Thank you for joining us and allowing us to be a part of your journey. How you feeling? I feel good. Yeah, I really don't. I just feel good. Happy to be here with you. I wanted to fight you this morning. That's cool. You could have did that. <laughs> ain't that held you back? You could have did that. I wanted that. to fight you this morning, but I'm in a I'm in a really good place right now. You ratchet to say I I'm ready to bang, but now I'm in a good place. I mean, it is what it is. How are you? I'm good. I've been um very determined lately. I've been on my shit. I've been on my time management better than normal. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to think, it's really on my, really on my go get it kind well, of vibe. What you say the other day when you was cleaning the room? I was like, why are you? What are you doing? Why are you doing that? You oh yeah, and. and yeah, I was cleaning the room, just throwing stuff out. Whether we didn't use no more, didn't want no more stuff, we talked about all the time doing. Yeah. But finally, when dig, I was like, I'm making room for my new blessings. Making room for the new. I was like, ooh. Got to be prepared for it. If you want things, you got to prepare for it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You got to make space for it. Even if it's like an energetic cleanse, you have to make space for the abundance that's coming your way. Mm -hmm. And then what's crazy, we went to the thrift store literally the next day, and y'all. We got a new rug. I've been wanting a new rug. We've been wanting like oriental kind of style. Yeah. And the places we went to, they was like, they was a little bit out of my budget for a rug. Yeah. Like, like three, like four, five thousand. Like, I'm not, I ain't at the point right now I'm paying four G's, four G's for the not rug. Not right now. And we went to a, a local thrift store. We had went to a bigger city to go find one. Mm -hmm. Went to a local thrift store and found one for a dub. Yeah, I, I I think sis didn't know what she had. She didn't know what she had, she but I, I I appreciate Charlotte though. I appreciate it. It's really beautiful, and we found a nice record player as well, vintage we record player. We gotta crazy. fix the needle on it, yeah, but it works. But it was crazy yesterday. Yesterday's thrift went went stupid, I, and we got a clock for the room. And we got a clock. The alarm is. I woke up. That motherfucker like a missile testing sign. I thought the house was, was like, on fire. It's crazy. <laughs> that motherfucker gonna get you up. Like it's gonna get you up. But uh, that's just like an example. Like I said, just be prepared. You gotta prepare yourself for the shit that you say you want. Yes. I mean, make room for that, sis. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like that was the word I needed that day for sure. I, I appreciate that. You know what I mean? I'm glad I can provide you with that. I'm glad you can too. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Now how y'all is from the cubes? I uh, first saw somebody uh didn't somebody like put in their story like the quote I said last episode was like what you say? I'm anti travel I just need a new rug yeah. and manifested that new rug just like that you know what yeah. I'm saying just speak it into existence sometimes too don't forget that yeah you know what I mean but how y'all feeling from the cubes how are y'all from the cubes from the cubicles from the cubes <laughs> so with that being said what are we rapping about today? So today, we are doing a Q&A episode. It's been a while since we did one. And although I had to like screenshot the cl questions, the, que the questions, the questions, we kind of going into this blindly. We haven't like yeah, I don't really know, looked at He don't know any of them. I, I kind of seen some of them. But I think that's good because it'll mm. be like a... Pretty raw. 
pretty raw. Like, mm-hmm. like in, we'll be answering off of instincts and ex- I guess an experience as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Let's get crazy. Let's get it. How not to feel angry over someone who has wronged you in the past with no closure involved. You want to go first? I'll go first because in my last episode that I did solo, I kind of talked about forgiveness. And I think that the misunderstood part about forgiveness or having a, I guess, a falling out with someone Mm -hmm. is we suppress our emotions. We think like, I'm not going to let them get to me. I'm not going to be angry about it, X, Y, Z. But I think it's important to feel these emotions. And this is quite the contra- cr- contrary. Contrary? That's number, contrary. That's number two. <laughs> I'm going to keep counting on you. <laughs> two. Please don't. Contrary. Um, like what? Other than what we're taught. We're not taught that. We're taught to like suppress our emotions. But I think it's important to be angry. Be angry with that mm-hmm. person. You know, feel all the feels, feel everything that you need to do. Um, but recently, if you haven't heard the last episode, I don't even know if I had did it yet in that episode. I think it was quite like the next morning after. I wrote a letter to my dad mm-hmm. forgiving him. First, I expressed how angry I was, how much I felt like I needed him in my childhood and just all of the things, all of the feelings that I have. And I cry. I literally came to tears when writing that letter to him. And I told you, I've never, like, all the years I've been alive and been without a father, I've never cried about it. Yeah. And I felt like that was the closure that I needed. That was the, I needed to actually acknowledge, like, hey, I needed you. I feel like I hadn't been keeping it real with myself. Um, And although this seems to be, like, a different, no, this is the same scenario I was was about to say, but angry Mm -hmm. with someone who did you wrong. But anyway... I think that's what needs to be done. You need to feel those emotions. Write a letter. He'll never see it. That letter will never see the light of day. But a lot of times forgiving someone is about, matter of fact, all the time. Forgiving someone is about you. Yeah. It's about releasing that negative energy so you can move on with your life and with your journey. But, yeah, just feel the feelings. Write a letter. Burn it. You know what I mean? I agree. And anger ain't necessarily bad. At it's all. just bad when you make decisions out of anger, you know what I mean? And you make permanent feelings with inside you out of anger. That's where anger really comes in mm-hmm. to do damage to your everyday life. It's not that it's not a bad thing. You just can't make decisions from it. And like you said, just feel it all. And letting go of the anger is letting that guard down on a piece of you. You know what I mean? Because yeah. if you keep the anger up, you're just guarding a piece of you that you're never going to let somebody else into. Facts. And then now we are becoming, which is so easy to do, we're becoming like a hurt person hurting somebody else. Exactly. It's such an easy thing to do because you think you're protecting, you know what I mean, yourself from what could be, but you're also blocking yourself from what could be. Yeah, it's it, a vicious cycle. It is. like So we have to be we have to be careful that we're not one of those hurting, hurting other people because we hurt. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's how I would go about that. Or you can hold that grudge. I fuck with that too though. You know how I get that. That's counterproductive. Yeah. I feel like cuz cuz here's the thing. Although I forgave my dad, I still don't fuck with him. Yeah. Like yeah. so I'm not I'm so I'm I guess not holding a grudge. I need, but I I need like, a different term for holding a grudge. I guess like the simplest way, I just don't fuck with you like that. Yeah, like. Um, we good. I just don't fuck with you like that, bro. Right. And maybe it's some more healing to do because maybe even not. I just, I've said this before in the podcast. I'm just, the person that he is energetically interferes with my being. Yeah. And so yeah. I have to keep my distance and protect my energy at all costs. So I forgive you, but I still don't fuck with you. That's, that's, that's okay. Everything ain't always like. Light and love all the time, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, that's just, that's real. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. How did you become you? Like, how did you get to this healthy, soft, happy place? Okay. I like when you pick the questions. I like when you pick them because I feel like I had a little bit of anxiety when I picked them because there's so many questions. No, nah, I just go grab one. I think I became me. It's definitely like a 10 plus year journey for sure. Life, really. It's a lifelong life, journey. Really. <laughs> it's life. a life, but I mean, you know, when you a kid, like five years old, six years, 
I don't know. It's definitely a life. It's definitely it's a life thing. But I get what you're saying. You started to actually like apply who I yeah. am like in the last ten years. I like, yeah. actually go about the process. I feel like when the person that you currently are is starting to really I'm trying to find a word. It's starting to hurt. Like it, it's starting to hurt you mentally, mm-hmm. physically, spiritually. You know what I mean? I get you. I feel like that's when a big leap comes or the change starts to come. But for me personally, I guess I'll do a quick personal story. I had like health issues. I have IBS. And mm-hmm. so I think for me, everything started with that. I began to try to make more conscious decisions on the food that I was putting in my body. I started working out. And from there, everything kind of just fell in line. I went through a, a like a little depression um, a little while ago. And I started to seek knowledge on making myself better and healing myself. So I think you really just have to look at where you are in your journey. Think about the things that are hurting you. Like, you know what I'm saying? And like mm-hmm. what you can do better. To, I feel like I didn't answer that question very well. I did. Yeah, yeah, you, you did. Okay. Second guess you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, mine is sort of the same way. I feel like it's been a lifetime of this thing. It ain't necessarily never, you know, just one part, like a year, you start to find yourself. Mm-hmm. It's like the pain and things that happen to you, even as a child, all of that is kind of like your flavor. It all just kind of simmers. Until you actually get to the time period where you want to start to become the best version of you. And that's when you start to mix all these flavors that's been within you, like the pain and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, To speak personally about me, like, as a child, I always felt overlooked or underheard. I'm a middle child. Often, like, I made, like, sacrifices for my brothers to have things. So, ultimately, I feel like I didn't have a voice for a very long time. Right. But ultimately, that, that led me to, like, wanting to rap. So, motherfuckers could hear me. Yeah. Like, you got to hear me now. You know what I'm saying? Small things like that throughout your life is, like, your sauce, your flavor. It's, like, it's just simmering up before you can get the recipe right to how you become you. It is something to focus in on. Focus on the things that make you angry, what makes you happy, what makes you feel grateful. All of these things mixed in is how you kind of become this version of you that that is healthy, that is you know, quote unquote soft or whatnot. Yeah. I love that you said angry too, because I think that's an overlooked emotion. It is. And it carries a lot of importance because like we've said before, if you if something really ticks you off, you get angry about that thing, there's some there's some sort of passion there. Yeah, yeah. You need you need to hone in on it. Yeah, but I also want to add for this person particularly and anybody else listening, you only see one side. Of mm-hmm. things, you only see what we're sharing. Don't ever get it twisted. I have my days where, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's an up and down journey. I have my days where I don't want to do anything. Like I literally cried this morning, which y'all know how that go. I make sure I cry. You're gonna get them out. But yeah, it's an up and down journey, and although you may see one side, there is ugly sides to everybody. My life to everybody. Mm-hmm. So I just want to um, reiterate that, but. Yeah, it's it's a journey. Take your time with yourself. And you if you are looking within, you're gonna become the person that you wanna be. How do you maintain your individuality while in your long term relationship? Mm. That is a good one. I'll let you lead. Um, one way is just knowing like we are two parties coming together. And with that being said, she's not gonna like everything I do. I don't. And I Believe me, baby, it's the, it's the same way. <laughs> but you got to give that person room to like not Be like them. it. And you yeah. have to be comfortable with them disliking it. Yeah. I know there's certain things that I do that really like, I, I, she wishes I didn't do those things. You thinking of a thing in your head? Y'all got a couple problems. Oh, okay. Me gaming. Yes. It's not my favorite thing. I know it is not your favorite thing. But that's just something like... She has to, you know, I guess, I don't know if it's put up with, but come to, to terms with that it brings me something. I don't, here, see, here's my thing. I don't mind you being on the game. I really don't. I don't want to sound like, Ugh. you You ain't got to explain it. That, that ain't what this is. But it's just one of them things. This is my, my example. It's one of the things. But you just got to be comfortable with your person disliking certain things. Yeah. You're, there, you're not, I don't have a partner so I can always be happy or she always say I'm right or you always agree with me. You know what I mean? I have a partner for 
how do I put it? Not necessarily difficult things in life, but confronting life. That's the, that's the biggest thing. When I confront life, if it comforts me, I'm so grateful to have a partner there with me. Okay. It lets me know when I'm right, when I'm wrong, when I need to push, when I need to pull, when I need to step back, or when I need to step up. You know what I mean? That is what a partner is for. It's not necessarily for this consistent, lovey-dovey, happy right. thing. No. If you just want um if you just want a yes, motherfucker, go get you a yes, motherfucker. You know what I mean? You can find plenty of people that just like that. Mm-hmm. Just always tell you you're right, you you're never wrong. Go get you a yes person. But if you truly want like a partner, um, yeah, you, you gotta be comfortable with the dislikes. Absolutely. And y'all always know y'all know I always mention a long time and it's important to have that time so you can can not can. Three. <laughs> So you can truly get to know who you are. But, and it just goes back to you talking about being a yes person and agreeing with everything that your partner says. When you have that strong sense of self, you have the courage to say, hey, no, I don't want to do this. Because I know sometimes in relationships, it is easier to just, even like something something as simple as what we going to eat. It's easier to say like, yeah, I want to go here or, but... Yeah, just curving it to one person each time. Yeah, and I know that's like a light example, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's 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 really good to have that long time so you can know who you are. Yeah, within your relationship, because it's easy to get lost and lose yourself in relationships. Oh yeah, easy. Your only identity is with that person for sure. But yeah. it, and also like let your person have their individual things, and every now and then, like if you want to embrace that, you know, what I mean, you never know. It might be something you might be interested in, like. I'm interested in boxing, and now Ree will watch. Oh, boxing. I will watch boxing. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. she fuck it's, with boxing it's, now. It's, even basketball, I used to watch. Yeah, yeah. When it's when it's when it's in season, like I will watch basketball with you. Are you going to write a self help book? You ever thought about that? No, I'm not. <laughs> you never thought about that. <laughs> I feel like if I ever wrote a self help book, it would be a self help book, but it wouldn't be a self help book. If that makes sense, I, I think if you. I ever write a book, it would be more so about um like my personal story. Okay. This one right here. We are overdue for music recommendations from Yuri. So give me five. I'm gonna go back to the last question. Would you write a self would we write a self help book together? That would be kinda cool. We might write a couple self help book. Maybe so. We've been together for a very long time for some young people. Or even I feel like a diary type of book would be really cool. Yeah, that'd be straight. We might do something like that. Y'all might get an ebook from us in that in that fashion. An ebook, okay. Um, music recommendations. So, you give me five. That's it. Sunset Tim. I really did not think I was gonna be on that list. <laughs> I appreciate you though. Cleo Soul. That's what I thought was gonna be first. Um, Salt, which is also Cleo Soul. Yes. Who have I been into? Really Cleo Soul. Cleo Soul, Cleo Soul, Cleo Soul, Cleo Soul. <laughs> that really is. We've been dominating the airwaves for you right now. So I give you that. Mine's with, um, I definitely recommend Cleo. Definitely Tim. Larry June. I just want to say Larry June. Um, who else do I think? Erica Badu. Yeah, didn't yeah. you know? Didn't one, at one classic. point that song was like speaking to my soul. That's classic shit. Um, well, that's what I say. Jay Worthy, that's another rapper I like to listen to. Um, Nipsey Hussle, I was introduced Hussle. to a song that's old. It's called None of This with Bino. Who, I'm, which, I'm not a good, big fan of Bino. Like, I know the West Coast loves they, Bino. He goaded out there. I know I can't get into him, though. Like, because I love Blast, and that's Blast, like, right hand man. Yeah, like, yeah, that's his dog. guy. They're going to they gonna drop a tape. Like, I think they literally just dropped yeah, a tape. Yeah, yeah, six. That's six tape three, so. Blast, too. Like, yeah. Blast. Love hard, some Blast. Hard. Boy, hard. Uh, I'm trying to think of anybody else I got up. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Brent right Fires, first of all. Yeah, yeah, always. Love Brent. Always Brent. I can't really think of nobody else right now. My boy Willie Nova. Willie, Will, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My boy Willie Nova. Uh, Nova Kane, if y'all want a specific song, crazy. The boy hard. So what does the perfect day look like for you? The perfect day? Um, waking up at 6 o'clock in the morning. 
either doing an at-home workout or going on a run at the park, a three-mile run, coming home and getting my girls ready for school because in my perfect day, they're definitely going to school. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And um, coming back home, making me a smoothie, journaling or reading while I'm make while I'm drinking my smoothie. Um, I really like to go to the coffee shop to do creative work that doesn't involve like actually filming or recording. I love going to the coffee shop and catching the vibes, getting me a hot tea. The tea that I love there is called the Breathe Tea. So good. Um, going on a day with my boo, going to our favorite Ethiopian restaurant after mm. we've get, gotten our work done. Maybe going to a few thrift stores, picking my girls up, having a movie night, and having pizza for dinner. That's pretty good. Pretty peaceful, too. I thought yeah. it was going to be a little more at the... Extravagant? Yes, I did. I did think yours would be. Like what? Because you like to travel. Okay. So I thought I thought yours would be a little more something, something like... Uh, well, I was just thinking my dad Something in the life. Barbados. You know, you, you an island girl. <laughs> but um, I was just thinking like my day-to-day life now. Don't get me wrong. I'm already would here. I live on... Would you live on an island? Would you live like... Nope, you know I like I gotta have a cold. See, that's so. why we should move to San Francisco. I'm trying to get him to move to San Francisco. She y'all. is trying to get me to move to Frisco. So I think we would we're gonna flourish anywhere, but I think we would really flourish. She thinking Frisco, maybe Nashville, Columbus, Ohio too. Columbus is high on my list. I ain't been there yet though, but it's very high from what I see. San Francisco like number one on my list, but. Compromise, you know, relationships. What's your perfect day? Oh, okay. I'm about to just move on to the next one. Without I, I was, I was um, perfect day for me. I wake up after her. I always do. Um, I like to wake up after her too. Why? I don't necessarily know why. I thought I had a reason why. I usually do have a reason why. I just can't think of it right now. But I usually like to wake up after you. Um, around six thirty. Revisit that. We gonna have to revisit the reason why. <laughs> I like to wake up after you. I ain't gotta tiptoe and not make noise to wake you up. Then, so if you mm-hmm. already up out of the way, then I ain't gotta do. I ain't gotta worry about all that. I gotta move like a ninja through my bedroom. Well, that's sweet. But, so, but no, thank you. It's fine. Wake up around six thirty. Um, wash face, brush teeth, come downstairs to a uh, hot lemon ginger water, like usually. It's tea. Just say tea. Yeah. Well, it ain't tea. Are it's you? not tea. It is tea because if you think about tea, what is the like? It be herbs and water. Yeah, yeah. But most time you just put a lemon slice and a little bit of ginger. And it's it, tea. Da, 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 da. I say drink a little water. Take my probiotics. 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 That's one for you. No, I did it on purpose. That ain't a one. No one knows that. No one can what? be sure of that. Anyways, get to my blueberry smoothie. Like we gotta have that every. I, I have it every day, literally. You you switch it up. I yeah, I switch need, it up. I don't need to switch it up. Um, get my daughters ready for school. Lunch. After that, let me come back. Make a song. No, no, fuck. I'm gonna go to the gym. And then come back, shower. You gonna have a smoothie before the gym? Damn, you right. I I was doing it as I didn't go to the gym, but I do love to go to the gym. Yeah, because on the day we record the podcast, we've learned that we can't go to the gym. Yeah, yeah. We'll be tired and can't be, think. Oh, oh. We've been like, stumbling over every word. Like, yes. it, it's horrible. But either way I go, some mixture like that. Um, podcast or make a Indoor, song. yeah. Um, go wash my car. I like to do that. You That's pretty I mean? relaxing. I like to go wash my car. Um, maybe a park or a coffee shop. Hits me pretty well in the afternoon. Um, I like to go shop too. I like to buy stuff, not just say for myself. I really like to get stuff for Bay. Um, some some like surprise for her. She likes surprises. I do like surprises. But you're a very hard person to surprise though. Why is that? Cause, Cause I'm nosy. Yes, that yeah. You check emails. You be all in shit that you ain't even got no business in. So it's just very hard to surprise you. Uh, and then I'm gonna eat my stuff off like you. Good dinner, maybe pizza. Let's say a burger, a curry. I fuck with curry heavy. You got me yes. on like that. Lentil curry. I never so thought good. I'd fuck with curries like I do like burgers and shit like that. But I fuck with a curry. You're welcome. 
I, I thank you for that. You put me on that. You're welcome. I love how both of our days was just like low key, and I feel like if you would have asked me six months ago, I should have said candle shopping. But I don't know why candle, candle shopping, shopping seemed very peaceful. I don't got no candle shopping around here. We probably do. We probably just got to explore. What I loved when I was in San Francisco, like I have this nice little candle that I got from like a little um, local shop. There are mm -hmm. like so many small local businesses there. And like I would love to support more businesses like that. Um, but I love, I feel like if you would have asked me six months ago, my day would have been extravagant. But what experience has taught me and what you have taught me is to enjoy the small delicacies yeah. of life. I enjoy my Monday. For sure. How do you remove people from your life? Cut them off. Change the number and move, <laughs> sis. I don't give a fuck Change your name. And move all Get that. a new passport. I don't care if it's your mama. <laughs> I don't give a fuck if it's your mama. Just change that number and move, sis. I'm kidding. But how do you remove people from your life? <sighs> hmm. Respectfully is how you do it for the most part. If you're removing them for whatever such a reason, if you want to let them know, like, hey, I don't think that, you know, where I'm at in life right now, I don't know if necessarily this relationship, you know what I mean, it's something that I need right now. I like that. So respectfully, you know, it's all love, but I got to take a step back for, for myself. Yeah, and it depends on who you're removing from your life. Like, is it a mom or dad? You know, it, it, yeah, it yeah, does. Yeah. It, that matters. I feel like when it comes to like friends, especially old me, like I'm a ghost. I'm just like gonna stop. Like, yeah, the toxic, toxic you. If you want to end it toxic, yeah, just ghost. But I don't recommend it. I don't. I don't recommend doing that. I think it's important to express how we feel and communicate with the people in our life um, who may not be in our life for very long yeah, yeah. But, but i think it's important to express how you feel um yes yeah, based on how heavy the relationship is too yes yeah, it's, if it's light like y'all really just now meeting and stuff like that like man, not even for me, if it's light it's, it's, it's fuck, fuck it i feel like and even it depends on the reason why you want to remove them from your life you know like the depths of that because sometimes in friendships and relationships, it may be as simple as we just grew apart. Nobody necessarily did anything, crossed any boundaries or anything like that. In those situations, there may not need to be any like super heavy conversation that needs to be had. It may be as simple as, hey, you know, we grew apart and I think it's time that we went our separate ways or spend less time with each other. I think it could be as simple as that. But... If it's toxic, if it's hurting you mentally, physically, or spiritually, fast as well. Yeah, yeah. You are gonna have to block them. Yeah, yeah. If it's if it's like that, then get out of there as fast as yeah, possible. Yeah, agree. But if it's if it's if it's not like that, then you know what I mean. You find better ways. But if it's like that toxic, that bad, get out of there as quick as possible mm -hmm. by any means necessary. Yeah, and it goes back to I know we want closure in these relationships. Sometimes people on the other end of these relationships may not be mentally ready ready for those conversations so you have to get that closure by yourself write a letter mm -hmm. leave do, do a voice memo or what is it called your voice notes mm -hmm. because you have to release it you have to get it out in order to get that closure or you're gonna be back answering their phone anytime that person calls that's true because sometimes i think it's harder to get out of and i think that's what this person is really saying i think sometimes it's harder to get out of relationships than we think it is yeah all this shit is sound it's a lot easier said than done. It really yeah. is. Emotions get evolved and you just, you know what I'm saying? You didn't ever really picture cutting this person off, but now it's like they draining you. So it's like, so you got to find some type of way of dealing with them and, you know, their energy. So it's easier said than done, but you definitely got to uh, gotta start doing it. Got to tiptoe. You got to go. Yeah, choose you. Choose you. Choose you. I like that. Mm -hmm. So this one, this is, I'm going to get, I'm going to get to that one next. We'll come back to that one. How do you involve your kids into your overall wellness? Mm. So, you want me to go? I was just going to say force. Nah. Nah, I do. Well, you can go ahead, though. Nah. For me, I I have to say lead by example. I remember when Aubrey was like four years old, I was really big on eating like greens and spinach and stuff like that. And I have this memory in my head where she was eating like her greens and she was like, it's so funny. Like, she literally was like, look, mommy, it's so good. But, like, I could literally <laughs> see on her face where she 
fucking hated it. But I would definitely have to say lead by example. Um, that's a perfect example. Your kids see you doing one thing, something healthy for yourself. They're going to imitate that behavior. Even going back to when we were children, I seen my mom do all these things. Some healthy habits, some, un some unhealthy, but as children, we are like sponges. We soak everything up. Even if we don't realize it, we're going to imitate the things that we see around us. So leading by example is the number one thing. Number two thing is I try to involve my children in the things that I'm doing. Like our youngest daughter, she loves to help us cook. Mm -hmm. She loves to put up the groceries. So definitely leading by example and in involving them in the activities. Like even when it comes to meditation and prayer, we pray every night as a family. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, just little stuff like that. Even on, oh, in our bathroom, I wrote here recently on the mirror, I am enough. Um, I think it was later that day, Aubrey came down and was like, Mom, I see what you wrote on the mirror there. I really like it. I think it's really nice. That's what she told me. <laughs> <laughs> she can hate when I am going to say her. She's like, I don't oh, sound yeah, like that, that, her little voice. But yeah, just lead by example. And I would say, don't think too much about how to involve them. Yo, damn alarm. My bad. Don't try to think too much. Like, don't think about it too hard on how to involve them. Lead by example. You focus on you and living your best healthy life, whatever that looks like for you. Your kids are going to see that. They're going to imitate that. And they're going to start to ask questions because kids be asking questions. They ask a lot of questions. Yeah, so involve them. Answer those questions the best that you can. Yeah, and force. I know, Reed, I'm more like the... Cause I, cause I'm grown, cause I'm grown. Yeah, That's literally yeah. the example. Why I have to do you this? You know, I, I, when we was kids, growing up, you hit me with that. Like, why I do this? Cause I said so. Why? Cause I'm grown. Like, you listen to me. And I don't like that. She don't like that, but she, she often will use that answer sometimes and be like, I see why you do you it. Can, though you can count. It's been times where you. It be stuff like it be it. But what it is is like, especially I'm talking to like a lot of young parents. We had our kid when we was young. What was you? Um, Nineteen. Nineteen. I was like twenty. Um, 21. 21. Um, they're your kid. They are kids are to be raised. We're not here to have this. Like, okay, don't get me wrong, I'm friends, of course, with my kids, but at the same time, I'm their dad. Again, it goes back to that partnership kind of thing. I'm not here just to, you know, agree and say yes to everything they want candy for breakfast and not eating their veggies and shit. Like, like you said, Re, you. Ivory was like making her face. She still would have ate all them greens if it was me. I know what's best for you. I'm your parent. I'm not necessarily I, like my mom used to tell me. I ain't one of your little friends. Like no, I'm I'm your dad. So a little bit of it is by force. Like I know best. You need to follow what I am. I know it might not feel comfortable to you right now, or it ain't necessarily what you want to do. But yeah, you need to eat some of this. You need to act a certain way. You need to go outside and be active. My daughter is a gamer. She's not really with the running shit. Nah. She's not really with the sports shit. So we shit. put her in soccer. So I, we still put her in soccer. She's still going like she's still going to do something to get her body going because that's healthy. Even though she don't necessarily want to go do it, she will. I, I said some of it is by force. We can't we can't we can't forget to raise our kids. I guess it's the word force that's throwing me yeah, off. Yeah, that's but I, I do kid children do need to be guided. Yeah, they, need to, they need to be guided. But in the same breath. They are tiny human beings who are people, who are their own individuals. Mm -hmm. So I think there's balance with it. It is. Like I said, we put her in soccer, but I don't force her to go be the best player. Well, we competitive now. It's like when she gets some shit. She is competitive. Shit, now, she but that's naturally her. I don't force her. Yeah, when she gets some shit now, she want to be the best at it. Like, yeah, yeah. But, but naturally, you know, that's what she want. But I, if she got on the soccer field one great England, like I'm a forcer. I just yeah. want her out there sweating and moving her body and being that's healthy. That's the most important part. That's it. You know what I mean? But I ain't going to force her to be, you know what I mean, Kobe Bryant and no shit like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yes, yeah, force. What were you talking about? You grown. They kids. They going to listen. I, I ain't. See, I just don't want someone who, I know everybody who listens to our podcast is in the right head space. Uh -huh. But I think, excuse me, with that ideology, some people in the world, like, I just feel like everybody don't need to be, everybody. first of all, everybody don't need to be raising kids. No, everybody <laughs> don't need to have kids. So I'm just saying, like, you saying force, but sometimes, like, I just feel like it's not good, like. 
sometimes. We got a good cop, bad cop thing going on here. And it's good, though. It's good. Kids need kids need discipline, and they also need to the flow. They need, you know what I mean, a lot of yeah. different things. So it's a, it's a good balance, what we got going on here. Agreed. Because I'm ready. I'm ready. I'll be ready at any point to put some punishment down. Yeah. I, I enjoy it a little bit too much. And probably. we've never whooped our children. No, I never have, but I tell my daughter all the time that I can't I wait to whoop wait. your ass. I'm like, why would you? And I'm like, I she's not going to do anything. I can't wait disciplinary on her. Can't wait for it. This episode is brought to you by Factor. As a creative entrepreneur who is also a mom and a wife, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I forget to eat. Or forget to at least prepare my meals. And then it's too late and I have to eat out somewhere that I didn't really want to eat in the first place. I feel like lunch is the biggest one for me because I'm super busy throughout my day and I just tend to forget. And that's why I really enjoy Factors meals because they are healthy, sustainable, super colorful, and they're right there. They're already made and I don't have to do too much thinking because honestly, I have days where I'm just like, I don't want to do too much thinking today. And Factor really helps me not have to think. And it helps me stay healthy and also be able to be a mom and a wife and get the work done that I need to get done. Yeah, and if you're feeling a little more fancy, they even have gourmet plus options. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Real fancy, very healthy. <laughs> Something really for everybody on any budget, any you know flavor palette that you're into, they have something to suit you. Absolutely. So head to factormills.com slash FTHH50 and use code FTHH50 to get 50% off. That's code FTHH50 at factormills.com slash FTHH50 to get 50% off. I can't. I'm sorry. I know you. You do you what you do for the kids and I do what I do too. I can't imagine. You just want to be this like hard guy on these kids, but you really are soft and you will never I got do daughters. it. I am soft on them, but at the same time, they, they need to know somebody going to be on their ass if they get out of line. Yeah. What color makes you feel right? Mm. For a long time, I feel like the color purple, but now I'm leaning to green. Green? I love green. Yes, you do. That's why I love plants. My favorite color is green. You knew that, right? I, I did know that. I did. My favorite color has changed. Do you I, remember I, any of my favorite colors? I thought purple was at one point. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I thought green. Yeah, it's course. green. Yeah, yeah. I thought orange was in there it at was, one point. In time. But that was before I met you, though. So that but must I have been something that. I told Look at that. you. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> yellow that. was my favorite color. Pink. Yellow was an odd favorite color. Yeah, I loved yellow, but mm. green is makes me feel serene. And that piece. Mm. What about you? Black is my favorite color. But how does that color make you feel? What color makes you feel good, though? I know black, black is your favorite color. Why? What about black? It's dominant. I love I love black. It's dominant. When you see it, it for me, it kind of takes control. It is a dominant color. When you lay certain colors next to it, it makes them colors pop. Like white. You know, I love black pants, white tees. Like my, I, I'm going to wear that 300 days out of the 365 right i get that but does black make you feel good inside yeah it do it do it's like such to me it's like such a complimentary but color you, as well you use the word dominant though who are you dominating like I'm, i need you i'm to dominating my day my life i am in control when i see black that's what i feel like okay I, you, you know feel what i'm saying in control. okay i okay. feel like in control if you walk down the street and you saw like five dudes all in like men in black suits you probably might get out that way. I don't know what they on, but like it seems like they on some, they on something like type shit. Okay, I'll let you, you know. You know what I mean? Head. I fuck with black, brown too though. Brown makes me feel very earthy. I love earth tone colors in general. Yeah, anything on the earth tone palette. You copying me though? Cause yellow and them and orange. What? That's, you ain't really did earth tone till I did. That was when I was in high school. But okay. You didn't though. Who kept me? Okay, sir. Somebody said, "Why are you? Why are we alive?" I saw that question. <laughs> Why are we alive? Big I bro. think that's I think that's a good <laughs> big bro. We're gonna find out one day. I think that's I a really good question. Right I that I just don't have the answer to right now in my life. I said, would you guys ever do mint slash sage green hoodies? Yes, they they're gonna be on the way, so absolutely. Let me pick some questions. Please. That was just a quick one. Go pick a question in, bro. Who the I don't like you. That's fine. I ain't never liked you. 
Do you think confidence is learned or found? I think the question is like, how do you, where do you think confidence derives from? I'll I'm let you start it since I asked the question. I think naturally we have confidence. We kids, we think we're the fastest. We want to show people stuff that we shouldn't be showing them. Like, watch me run from her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Type shit. Like, I don't know why kids do that. I don't know why I did it as a kid. I it, feel it, like I still have some of that in me. Like, babe, watch me do, do this. Do. Look what like, I can do. Especially at the gym, like, or some shit. Like, you really be having that energy. But we have it as kids. And then once we start to grow, we start to see other people good at things that we thought we may have been the best at. And then we, you know, we may start to question ourselves or however confidence starts to become shaky it kind of happens for just about everybody not only that too like we see other people but also society telling us what we should look like what we should be like the media yeah, parents i yeah. think uh, we a Out, lot of that outside influences start to you know come in fast yeah we start to be more conscious of the world around like not even like just the world on a bigger scale, scale. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, from where where this from like ads or just you know getting outside more and just noticing things it, it happens yeah but then regaining that confidence is the biggest thing yeah as far as it how do you regain it and i believe in repetition is mm -hmm. like the key to like confidence and no matter what it is whether you know whatever you want to be confident in or just in general have it more you have to actually go about telling yourself and moving in a confident way more consistently and it'll start to kind of feel like second nature again. Right. I agree with that. I agree with everything you said. I think definitely it's something that's within us. Like mm -hmm. you said, when you see kids, they be confident, confident, like, I can do this. I bet I can beat you. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, like little Naturally. stuff like that. Um, but I think as we get older, especially around – Especially these kids these days because they have access to the internet. I think they I was do. just having a conversation with you about a couple of my friends was saying that their daughters don't like the way they look. And even, you know, our daughter, we had that problem. Um, I don't even want to call it a problem. problem yeah. But we that, experienced yeah. that a little bit with her. And I think it's because social media, I'm not blaming social media, but these children, they are, they. I am blaming social media, sorry. They grew up with it that's all they know like we were having that conversation we had a life outside of social media like we remember that a time where there was not social media but see well we still have forms of media that we still judge judge like beauty standards that's off true of but see here's the thing i think is a little different and you know they see regular quote-unquote regular everyday people in their homes see we seen celebrities and although i don't put people on pedestals I think that there's a difference. Oh, she's a celebrity, but if you are on your phone and it's just so accessible and you see everyday people look, quote unquote, perfect online, I think you'll start to compare yourself to everyday people. Does that make sense? To an extent, but it's just like, it's, it's still the same thing because like celebrity has just been stretched out now more. When we were kids, the only people on TV were actual celebrities, like, you know, artists, athletes, uh, talk show hosts, models, you know what I mean? Things of that nature. Now, like, influencers has been stretched into that. It's just more people have exposure to the screens and stuff like that. So Yeah, so you think it's the same thing? It's the same thing. It's just been stretched out to actually normal, everyday people can now get involved into it, you know what I yeah. mean? So, like you said, I, we, I, I'm a, we average people, but we influencers online. So, you know, yeah. somebody may look at you. People have come up to you like, you know what I mean? Like very happy clapping, I'm be like, whoa, blow my oh, mind. Oh, we've met people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know you. Like so, I know it, it just stretched out. I think it just happens. It could have been in, in 1901. It could still happen. It, 1901. It's, it's 1901. What happened in 1901? Make me say that year. I don't know. Maybe my soul was once in that in that time. Maybe. Period. Probably so. Probably found love. Probably found you. Probably. Probably did. <laughs> Might be our second go round. Maybe third. Maybe fourth. Oh no. But. Nah, I was just saying like it's easy to get up, get caught up in the comparison trap when we come. Like when you're a kid, I feel like when I was young, I really didn't think about how I looked. Especially you don't four or five, I don't really remember. But I'm saying when you get eleven, twelve, I think that's the age yeah, where you yeah. start to kind of like pay attention to your physical appearance and compare yourself. And I think I, that's normal. Yeah, I think that's super normal. And it goes back to what you said. We have to 
go back to regain that confidence. And something that I like to do, I've, even when I start to compare myself to someone and have someone else's amused, I think about all of the things that I love about myself and how unique I am and how there's nobody else like me in this world. Like all these souls, all these vessels here on this earth, there is nobody else like me. That's like, think about that. There's nobody else like you. That's hard. And when I hone in on it, I'm like, damn, yeah. like I'm really this shit. Like it, it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how anybody else looks. It's all about perspective mm -hmm. and what you focus on. So, but yeah, but definitely repetition, repetition, repetition. Best tea to drink for gut. Oh, so y'all know I love gut health. I love me. A, I have a ginger lemongrass tea that I love. It's a loose leaf tea. Amazing. This is also, it's not a tea, but drinking warm water, it can do so much for your good. Like I learned that, like just warm water. It warms you up and it gets everything going in your digestive system. Um, y'all, you know this is this my area. Like I love this mm -hmm. shit. Um, also, lime water. Love me a good lime water. True. But yeah, ginger. Ginger is a big one. Ginger, lemongrass, lemon, lemon ginger tea. That's for me. Yeah, lemon one. ginger tea for you. Yeah, for sure. Yes. No other tea. I don't necessarily know the flavor of what like herbs are in it, but there's one called a uh, coat throat. Oh my I, god, I yes. With, I used to fuck with that whole. I don't necessarily know what was necessarily in it. I don't even know what brand makes it. Oh, I do. Traditional medicinals. Okay, yeah. Or yeah. either I think it's either traditional medicinal or medicinal tra it's traditional medicinal. I'm sure. That's the brand. And it I didn't love it. I didn't I like the taste of that one, but I feel like it didn't make my stomach feel too good. Yeah. But you know, different different it was Things for different people. That one was them. Uh, them on my top stuff. Yeah, definitely lemon ginger for me for sure. And then this one: how to navigate developing self love and self compassion. I'm 25 and still struggling, as you should be. Exactly, girl. I'm 31. <laughs> as still you should struggling. be. Struggling. 25 is very young, so yeah, you probably new into this realm. Just take it easy. You're gonna get to scoring good and everything pretty well over time. Just take it light on yourself. That is like self compassion. Self compassion, yeah, take grace. It. You you not a you not a necessarily this sprint. You more of a marathon. Just take it slow with you. And I feel like in those stages in life, I feel like eighteen for me personally, from eighteen to now, eighteen to twenty. Neil, Neil. <laughs> y'all, oh my god, Neil. the insider. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but from. 18 to let's say 25, 26, I think we struggle a lot at that age because we feel like, okay, I'm done with high school. I have to figure my shit I'm out. I have big, to figure I'm out my purpose. Shit, yeah, I have to figure out my purpose. And I think we put a lot of stress on ourselves mm -hmm. to be who we're meant to be, but just live life, take it day by day. And what's it called when you embrace, yeah, okay. embrace the experience and just, just know that when you are aligned with your inner self, you're going to be the person you were meant to be. Just like you said, and give yourself that grace, literally. And what that looked like, because I know they ask, how do I give myself compassion, which is basically how I give myself grace, that may look like, Two different things. It may look like one day I'm crying, I'm distraught. I've literally had days like this where I was supposed to have work done. I was supposed to do this. And I just allow myself to cry, lay in bed, and feel those feelings. Because I think we don't realize we suppress emotions. We don't allow ourselves to feel things, which I've said a million times. And so for me, all of this shit just kind of comes at once. And so I give myself that grace and time to just lie in bed and cry in bed. A compassion could also look like because we're so comfortable and we're resistant to doing new things such as, hey, I want to build a YouTube channel. I have a lot of knowledge in this or whatever to catch me. I just want to share my life. But uh, I don't really feel like editing today. I don't feel like sharing my life today. That's comfort speaking. You really want to share your life. 
but you're being resistant because you're scared. You're scared of the unknown. You're scared of what's new. That's the time when you say, you know what? I'm going to get up, make this shit look sexy, share my life, go to a cute-ass coffee shop, go to the park, wherever, and edit this shit. So sometimes compassion and grace could look like either of, of those scenarios. Yes, and just keep keep failing and keep forgiving yourself. Keep yes. trying. Yes, oh, I love that. Keep failing and keep forgiving. That's, that's it. That's how you're going to learn to love yourself more. Just by keep trying, keep failing, keep forgiving yourself. Just keep going. Um, be gentle in this time period. You're going to go through a lot, 25, you know, but th- these are good times in your life. Every time is good. We just yeah, have to sit back day. and enjoy it. Um, so don't put so much pressure on it. We Definitely are. don't put too much pressure. And let go of expectations, too. That's a big one. Okay. How did y'all work through disagreements early on with different communication styles slash love languages? You want to leave? Um, cause we have disagreements every day. We do all the time. Business uh, disagreements, relationship disagreements. Yeah, whole lot of disagreements gonna come again with the partnership because, it's, like I say, it's two parties people. coming yeah. together. You know, and everything is. Sometimes we align perfectly on ideas and plans, and other times we don't. Um, our love languages are kind of different. Mine's is more. It's less. A lot of times it's less words and more action. I, I'm more let's do things for you um, before a, a whole lot of words or anything like that come out. That's usually my love language. We speak in, in a lot of different ways. Um, you cook for me. I clean for you. These are kind of like our love yeah. languages and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. The disagreements part, I don't know. It, we, it be different. We go through different phases. Like yeah. she, Sometimes she just punch me. I do, or yeah, I but, push him. I keep. I literally did this morning. This morning, I just yes. keep kept pushing you, pushing you. Yes. Which I don't know if that's like super healthy. healthy. Maybe not. <laughs> it may be kind of toxic, but it is. But I mean, I didn't hurt you. No, your hits can't hurt me. But I was just trying to show that I was angry. Yeah, and then sometimes that's able to come out of this playful. Yeah, it's playful. Very playful. Like I, I, I want to don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Nothing like that. But Very playful. Joking. We've always done that. Um. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just it's like just, it just depends on the day. Yeah, and it depends on your partner too. Just how can y'all? Because we know if we argue with us, we know we not ain't nobody going nowhere. Ain't nobody. Yeah. Ain't nobody breaking up. So it's just like eventually we are gonna be like I'm tired of being you know angry with my partner. I yeah. want to be happy with him, but I, I do kind of. It still kind of fucked them a little bit, but I, I got to get back right with them. That's how I be sometimes. So, like, I just be needing my space sometimes. And when I say space, it be like five minutes. Like, I was mad at you, and I came home and got took a hot, long shower, maybe 10 minutes. And then I said something, like, I asked for the oil. You was like, it's down the stairs. I go get it. And I'm like, I go get it myself. Like, it's just like yeah, yeah. little... Sp- yeah, getting back into interacting yeah. with each other. So, I don't know. And I think another thing... With relationships, it's not, I think we might have said this earlier, it's not 100% agreement all the time. That's not rela- what relationships are about. Nah. Um, You just, to me, my relationship is about having somebody who can match me energetically, who knows me, and who wants to get to know me, who wants to continue to learn, you know, every dimension there is to know about me. But yeah, we just, I don't know, It just it just depends on the day. Yeah, but y'all do need to, you can't necessarily say what your love language is. It's just something that's learned over time. Yeah, and it changes too. I feel it like does. mine's changed. It's changed. And then like, the more we develop our self-love, our, our love for our, our own selves, yeah. it changes the love we have for each other Ooh, in, yeah. in a more in-depth way. So it really is communication and analysis too. Like study your partner you mm-hmm. know what I mean? a little bit. You know what I mean? When things happen... Um, that go when things go left, you know, how do they be? You know, what I mean, what what happens? Yeah, I used to have it bad about um, something go bad, I just don't want to talk. Um, yeah. yeah, I used to have it bad about that. Um, I'm a lot better now, I can communicate my feelings a lot more thanks to Re. Thanks to me, I feel like I don't know, I think you learned it on your own. Communication is really important though. Um, it is. I used to, I used to be really bad at this because. I felt to communicate how I felt, what I liked, because sometimes we don't be want to hurt each other's feelings, mm-hmm. but you have to be real with that person because if not, they're going to keep doing the shit that you don't like. 
Yes, and, and, and there's a thin line between being real and just like hurting somebody too. Right. So a it's lot of how people, you use your words. Yeah, but a lot of people like to disguise their toxicity as being real. I'm just being real with you. A yeah. lot of people like to try to disguise it as that mm -hmm. uh, when they trying to be hurtful towards somebody. Yeah, it's all about intention and yes. like the way that you use your words for sure. Yes, you know, and the biggest thing in relationships, remember... Remember, y'all are friends. Ain't nobody here to hurt mm. the other person or rule over the other person. I want to see you do well. Defenselessness. So, defenselessness. In relationships like, is important. I'm not I'm not here to hurt you. So if it did hurt you, that wasn't my intent ever. Yeah, sometimes I forget, like, you ain't my enemy. And I'll be yeah. going to, like, fight you sometimes. But <laughs> See what I mean, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you get through rough patches? Re, re helped me, like, just with the phrase, everything is temporary. It just kind of puts everything in perspective. It, it's all a it's all a moon cycle. It will all pass, and it may come back again, but then it'll pass again, and all things are like that. Everything is temporary. Yeah. I love that phrase. It definitely taught me the same thing. Nothing is permanent. Everything is impermanent. Because I think when we're going through these particular things, it seems like forever. It seems like, oh, I've been, my heart has been broken forever. Mm -hmm. But really, it's been two weeks. Yes. You know? But yeah, that helped me out a lot. What was the question? How do you get the rough patches? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and also just practicing some self compassion once again. Being nice to myself, um, making sure I'm communicating. Like, I think having someone to talk to is important. Making sure I have the people who care for me and who have good intentions for me in my corner. That's important yeah. as well. I think that's not talked about as enough. enough. Um, I know we, I think sometimes a long time is romanticized. And mm -hmm. a long time is nice. But don't get me wrong, we're human beings. It's our natural instinct to want to be around other human beings. It is. So, Fuck all that alone time shit for right now. <laughs> but um just being around people who like care give, for yeah, you. Yeah, give who you truly high care for you. you yeah. And them people will make you feel um when I ain't have a lot of money in life, being around Ree and her high frequencies made made your boy feel rich. Mm, rich like in something. It. You know what I mean? Rich in spirit. Yes. So that's one. Um I just had the question. Okay, a question that, that we get on the For the Healthy Hoes page often. What? How do I start a podcast? Start it? That is, that is <laughs> simply put, go do it. You asking, but you just really need to go do it. In all technical, I'm going to get to the technical parts, mm -hmm. right? You need a recording device. device, meaning you need like a recording storage device. You need a laptop or something to I like, actually don't know on. that you need a laptop. You might not. That's what I said. It, it's a lot of different a things. A phone. You could even have a phone. You can phone. have it from a phone because um, Spotify for, podcast. for podcasters has it set up to where you can record right from your phone just yep. using your phone, the headphones that yep. actually go from your phone. Yep. So you just need a hosting device. For us, it's a laptop. It can be a phone, whatever you want to use. Yeah. If you go the laptop route, you can get a microphone that has a USB plug straight into it. Yeah, you know more than me. I literally yeah. just had it. Like, my mind, mind just literally... Yeah. So, this is the technical part. You can get a USB microphone, plug it straight in. Mm -hmm. Or what we have, because I, I record music at home, we have an audio interface. Mm -hmm. The one we use is a Focusrite Scarlett um, 201, I think. I think that may be, or 212. Okay. It has two inputs. We They have one that's even cheaper with one input. Okay. You need a, a microphone. We use the Rode podcast microphone. Yeah, Rode Pod mic is one of the most inexpensive ones. Yes, I think they're a hundred bucks. I think they're one ninety nine. One ninety nine. Yeah, I just okay. looked it up for somebody yesterday. Okay, two hundred dollars then. But they have even cheaper ones out there. Yeah. Um, you don't have to do a visual podcast either. No, nope. you don't. We, we didn't start off visual. We did not. Sometimes I still second guess being visual. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't know. I just don't know how every week you be this close like, to no visual. We do the visual. But we're going to keep it going. And it's going to get better and better. Exactly. But these are the technical things you will need for a podcast. Now, the technical shit you get off Amazon in one day. Maybe maybe we'll, we'll leave links in the show notes for the people who are interested in the podcast. podcast. We'll leave links in the show notes. Also, follow Spotify for podcasts. Yeah, we'll help you out a lot. Because I, I literally just started following them yesterday. And... Got some great advice. Got some great advice about Mike. So definitely 
it's so many resources out here online, but follow Spotify for podcasts. Now, that is the technical part. Okay. The biggest thing holding you back from the podcast is you. Is you. And mm-hmm. that's not just anybody, a podcast, it's that anything. business, yeah. anything. Things holding you back is you. Yeah. So all that technical shit I said, it don't matter. It really you. don't matter. It take a quick YouTube how to start a podcast, yeah. what I need yeah. to find the equipment. Yeah. It's harder to put a search bar inside yourself to get Ooh. you to go out there to get it done. Yeah. So that's what you really need to be on. Like, how do I, you know, search the worldwide me and find my reasons for stepping out there like that? Yeah. So that's the real thing that's holding you back from your dreams. It ain't that you don't technically know the shit to go buy, man. You know to go get a camera, a microphone. You know all the shit you need to get, but... You you having trouble finding your why? You need to dig deep. Yes. So that's what's holding you back. Do some meditation, some journal, some reading. Mm-hmm. Go on some walks. Switch it up. Switch switch it up. Um, make it different than your what you're doing now. Cause yeah, yeah. And step out there, kid. That's one thing. Just like a lot of you, you can go on a lot of walks. You can go on a lot of different things, but you just need to get yourself out there. Yeah. Stop thinking about what people might think of you when you. Get to doing that and things of that nature. Just step out there, kid. Yes. If, if I can tell you anything, get out there. Just like literally, when I said started, I wouldn't be. An, I wouldn't be an asshole. No, she's not. But it, but but come but on, cause start it. Just do it. it. It's if we can research, you know, what I mean, whatever. We didn't looked up some dumb shit in our lives. Like <laughs> literally, like everybody looked up some dumb. What's shit. What's this mole on my leg? Google. Like, like you, you know, know what I'm saying? <laughs> you just spent hours on WebDM because you had a cold. WebMD, WebMD, my bad. Because <laughs> you got a cold, you just spent hours on WebMD looking shit up, dog. You can find out how yeah. to get this shit done. You just ain't pushed yourself to. You just resisting because it's unknown. You don't know how it's gonna turn out, which is beautiful. It is Them relishing go- it. Man, get out there, have some. You need to get out. What then was? The old outcast song. Well, it may be goody mob. I don't think get, it's get up, get out and get, get something. something. Yeah. Don't let the days of your life, life pass by. Like real shit. Like get up and get out and do something. Like even if it fails, at least you got the information that that failed. Exactly. And you keep building on that. Let me tell you something. The time that we live in, the internet is at our fingertips. Bro, business at your fingertips. Like you can do anything you want to do. The only thing right. that's holding you back is you. And your opinion of Others' opinions of you. That's yeah. the strongest thing that holds most people back. Absolutely. Is the opinions of other people. And, and that shit's not even real. That's a narrative in your mind that you're choosing to put on repeat. Exactly. Like we said before, nobody said those things. Nobody, nobody did Nobody that. wrote that in the chat. Nobody said that. Nobody wrote oh, that in the chat. I'm nobody. Behind. Like, that's your ass that he's saying it to you at home for no fucking reason at all. Stop holding you back. Yeah. I think the some of the latest podcast episodes that I did will really help this particular person mm-hmm. or anybody struggling with this, but how to be unfuckwittable yep. and authenticity online and offline. I think those both are great episodes that will kind of answer this question even more in depth. Yeah. So, simply put, start it. Yeah. Why did you stop making YouTube videos? Honestly, I got really burnt out. And there was just even so even if you're doing what you absolutely love, if you are burnt out, you're going to start hating it. And I Mm -hmm. think that's kind of where I was. And I just needed to take some time, take a step back so I can come back better. Um, When I first stopped making YouTube videos, I was like, I don't even know if I ever want to come back. But now I think it's been about three, four months and I'm missing it and I'm craving to talk to my YouTube community and make those YouTube videos um so yeah i'll be back real soon all right so the last question how do you overcome having a reckon a who <laughs> <laughs> that's one for me that's two that is one it's two how do you overcome having a record <laughs> let me sing <laughs> i know the word like you said it in my head <laughs> i see it i fuck it up how do you overcome having record? <laughs> you say <it>. No. <laughs> you just say it, bro. <laughs> Irreconcilable. Oh, oh shit. I don't know why I couldn't say that Where word. Where is it at? Right here. Irreconcilable. <laughs> oh, shit. Tears are in my eyes. <laughs> Come on. Give me your hand. How are you? Okay, hold on. Put your phone there. You're going to miss up the jet. 
Oh. Ooh. Okay, here we go. Whew. How do you overcome having erect... <laughs> See, look at you. Did they spell it right? They did. Irreconcilable differences yeah. with your family. How do you overcome having irreconcilable differences with your family? Oh, my yeah, that God. Way, that way oh, me a lot of trouble shoot. Today. Well, well, it's been a good day. I'm crying. It's been a good day. So, <sighs> um, you have to know, just because that is your family, and we didn't get to choose our families at all, um, that doesn't mean you have to go with every notion that they give you or any culture that is involved in your family. You can step out and find comfort in necessarily being the black sheep of the family. To overcome them is to just have strength in that. Yeah. Know that they still love you, you still love them, but you do mm -hmm. not have to be conform. buried or yeah, conform or be buried in their beliefs. You can have your own. Yeah, I know when you if you're a younger listener, you know high schooler, you might live at home and, and it might be harder. Yeah, it's a little harder for you to break loose, but your time will come when you will have the freedom to step out there. Yeah, but just know that you know more than likely your parents are coming from a very loving place. Place, place yeah, you know, not with everything. Um, and just have like I said, just have comfort in knowing that your time is coming and that you still love them, they still love you, but you just can't rock in the same fashion that they do because it's just not healthy for you. Yeah. For me and for my experience, I have to say that it goes back to, A, having a strong sense of self and who you are mm -hmm. and your decisions. And from what we've both kind of experienced as adults, it's one of the things where we kind of lead by example. I'm not saying our lifestyle is the best lifestyle and it's going to work for everybody, but... You know, we eat healthy, and I know it's like your mom, my mom, even um, my brothers. Yeah, they'll be like, they'll mention like, oh, I ate this, or they'll ask questions. Your oldest brother, he calling you asking about smoothies at one point. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. And then the next thing is to kind of just, not that you even have to explain yourself, explain why you're doing any, why, man, I cannot talk. I got your curse. What? You're not, yeah, that yeah, word. Oh, one time with me. You had like four. You did it like four times, bro. I did. I did so, it there, yeah. Right. So, um, reconcilable. Um, but communicate with love. Like, why you feel so strongly about this? Yeah, yeah. And then they, be, they may be able to kind of understand your perspective a little bit more, you know? Yeah, for sure. There's I that, you know, you know. And I know some of these things are a little more difficult than others. Some, it might be like you don't necessarily like your parents, the religion you're under, yeah. or I know these things are very tough. So <clears throat> be gentle, you know, come from a place of love. Definitely. But stand on what you believe mm -hmm. in and, yeah. you know, have confidence that, again, your family not going to cut you off or anything like that. And how do I, I put not. this? Family... Is I was finna say changeable. <laughs> say you can swap them out. What? I was <laughs> but no, just because you like born into like your family, your mom, dad, and such, it don't mean you won't go into this world and make family with other people yes, though. So agree. You know that's what I mean by you know I know you have your family you're born into, but there's family out outside of them yeah. inside this world. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, like I said, I got family now. Me and Re are family. Like. Mm -hmm. And even with friends that we've made, we would consider a lot of them yeah, family. family. So, um, just just know that you are loved, and there's a loving community out there for you. So, stand on your beliefs. Yes. And with that being said, with that being said, thank you guys so much for allowing us into your space. Um, we're sending you so much peace, so much love, and everything you need in this moment. Bye.